organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up this morning on Daily Iowan TV, Pentecost March, Iowa City residents bring their voices front and center. And a new partnership, a close look at how a U Iowa department is teaming up with China for a competition. It was a busy weekend for Iowa athletics with two big wins for wrestling and a disappointing loss for Iowa basketball. All that and more coming up, Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Nikki Crossway. Yesterday afternoon, hundreds of people gathered in front of the Pentecost for a protest titled March for Iowa's Teachers. It was hosted by an organization called Iowans for Public Education. The group gathered to protest a bill that will strip public employees of their collective bargaining rights. The bill, formerly known as House File 291, would also remove the clause that requires employ employers to provide workers a reason for firing and suspensions. A public hearing regarding the bill will be held tonight in Des Moines at the Capitol building. Police arrested a local man for a shooting that took place early Sunday morning on Wayne Avenue and Baker Street. Though the victim has no life-threatening injuries, 51-year-old Victor D. Hall was charged with attempted murder, felony possession of a firearm, trafficking stolen weapons, and a reckless use of a firearm. Just this past fall semester, the University of Iowa College of Engineering found itself a new academic partner, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Two students from the college will team up with two students from the Hong Kong University and participate in the 6th IMEC-E Greater China Region Design Competition, an annual collegiate event that this year will focus on robotics and the mining industry. Our Daily Iowa TV reporter, Jolly, brings us more on that story. It's 7 in the morning here, it's 10 at night there. Trying to find a time where we can uh, all talk has been kind of a challenge, but it's been fun. Uh, their communication skills in English are awesome, and we've been on very very similar page this whole project. So Sam is a fourth year industrial engineering student at the University of Iowa. About one month later in March, he will be in Hong Kong participating in a design competition with his partner Wen Bo, as well as two students from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. The four have been working on this project for a long time and they usually share their ideas through their weekly Skype meeting. During Skype, we share our ideas face to face. You know, sometimes uh, when you're sending an email, it might not be that good to get question answered immediately. The two said they've enjoyed working with the Hong Kong students and, of course, learning about their cultures. However, there are times when they may need a little consensus on things like units. Basically, you know, say we're going to use metric units, we're not going to use English units. Um, we're going to use this term, monology, we're not going to use that term. Working around barriers like these broadens students' perspectives while enriching their design challenge experiences. It's a great opportunity for students to get exposure to international project teams and to learn about design and to learn about other cultures and overcome the hurdles with dealing with them. Um, you know, a, a global project. The program leader hopes to provide students more unique opportunities to collaborate with foreign students and to maximize their international experience. Reporting in University of Iowa College of Engineering, Jelly, Daily Iowan TV. Well, hopefully the weather this week all turn into some beautiful weather. I heard there's a lot to look forward to. Let's send it over to Ryan and the weather studio to see just how beautiful the weather is going to get this week. Ryan? That's right, Nikki. We're expecting really good temperatures this week and especially into the weekend where we're going to see weather in the high 60s thereabout. But let's get to this morning's temperatures. This morning we're seeing temperatures hover around the low 30s, but this afternoon we'll see temperatures reach the low 50s with mostly sunny skies. Tonight temperatures will drop down to low 20s with mostly cloudy skies. And Tuesday morning will kick off Valentine's Day with temperatures in the upper 40s with mostly sunny skies. Now let's take a look at our six day forecast. This week, temperatures are on the upswing, so maybe make some outdoor plans for this weekend. Tuesday, temperatures will reach the high 40s with sunny skies. Wednesday, things will cool down a little bit, and our high will just reach the low 40s with partly cloudy skies. Thursday, temperatures will be back in the upper 40s with mostly sunny skies. 
Friday we'll see a big jump into the upper 50s with sunny skies. And this weekend we're seeing highs in the 60s. That's right, the 60s with sunny skies. It should be a beautiful weekend. Go outside and enjoy Iowa City. Nikki, back to you. The University of Iowa recently hired a new recycling coordinator for the Office of Sustainability. Daily Iowa TV reporter My Molly Shen has more. Based McKinley, joined the University of Iowa in September as the new recycling coordinator in the Office of Sustainability. She focuses on reducing the waste at campus in the first place. With years of working experience at a recycling program in St. Louis, she recently is working with the eight-week national recycling competition, Recyclemania, with another university to encourage the campus and local communities to recycle more. Put together a uh, weekly set of tasks and activities that students and staff on campus can participate in. And by participating, you become eligible for prizes. So we're trying to incentivize particip participation and get more people uh, involved. A lot of U.S. students are still confused about recycling, and they do not know how to recycle their stuff. So the McKinley base will teach us how to put our garbage at the right place. Most people know that their paper and their cardboard and their plastic bottles can be recycled, um, but they might not know that their you know, milk cartons or juice cartons can be recycled or that their paper coffee cups can be recycled. Beth hopes she can educate it and encourage people to recycle more, not only in the next eight weeks. Let's see how well she would lead the recycling at campus. More listen, daily NTV. The Hawkeye community mourns the loss of yet another legendary alumnus. Last night marked the passing of Grammy Award-winning jazz singer Al Jarreau. The We Are the World singer graduated from the University of Iowa in 1964 with a master's in vocal rehabilitation and continued to make his alma mater proud throughout his decades of work. Jarreau died at the age of 76 and completed his final tour only five days after his death. It was a bittersweet weekend for Hawkeye sports. I'll toss it over to Ashlyn Bauer in the sports studio. Ashlyn, what went down this weekend? Thanks, Vicki. You're right. Iowa Wrestling had a bittersweet duel yesterday. The Hawkeyes closed out their Big Ten schedule by welcoming in a ranked rival into Carver. Colin Murphy has more. The Iowa Wrestling team welcomed in Big Ten rival Nebraska into Carver Hawkeye Arena Sunday afternoon in a battle of top ten teams. Starting at 125 pounds, number one ranked Thomas Gilman took care of business, defeating Tim Lambert of Nebraska 6-3. The number three ranked Iowa Hawkeyes started off their match against number six ranked Nebraska exactly how they would want with a win by Thomas Gilman. Next up was Corey Clark, who was upset by Nebraska's Eric Montoya. After his win, Montoya made a questionable cutthroat gesture to the crowd. Unfortunately for Nebraska, the gesture riled up Carver and the Iowa bench. The Hawkeyes never looked back. Montoya, he made us pay. And you know what? Our team had to bail. We had to bail ourselves out after that. I mean, they were pretty riled up over in that bench, and I don't notice much. I let my brother take care of that, um, noticing the other bench, but I did notice that they were, they were riled up over there after that match. That was a big rallying point for them. After their first loss of the match, the Hawkeyes rattled off wins in the next six matches. Alex Meyer and Sammy Brooks scored the most points for the Hawks with a tech fall by Meyer and a pin by Brooks. The Hawkeyes defeated the Cornhuskers 27-9. to Overall, you know, uh, good win and, you know, move on from it. This is a great win. I mean, uh, McChrystal is a, is a tough opponent. Uh, I mean, he wrestled my workout partner, Kyle Springer, in high school. And I, I remember watching those matches. Um, just got to keep wrestling. At 12-2, and two, the Hawkeyes will finish out the season with the national duels and then on to the Big Ten tournament. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Colin Murphy, Daily Iowan, TV Sports. With two losses on the season, the third-ranked Hawkeyes are still in good shape to make a run at the Big Ten and National Championships. Although wrestling had a good weekend, there was another men's team that didn't have the same winning experience. Iowa basketball played Michigan State on Saturday. The Hawks were leading 32-31 at half, but couldn't keep that lead and fell to the Spartans 77-66. That leaves the Hawkeyes 14-12 on their overall record and 6-7 in Big Ten play. 
Now in women's basketball, they played number 13 Ohio State on Sunday. The Hawks fell to the Buckeyes 88 to 81. Although it was a tough loss for the Hawks, they had four players in double digits for points. The Hawks will play Northwestern on Thursday at home at 7 p.m. Now another men's sport that is actually doing particularly well is the men's gymnastics team. The Hawkeyes had their first meet back in Carver on Friday since upsetting number nine Cal on the road. On Friday, the Hawkeyes competed against two teams in the top five when they took on number one Oklahoma and number five Minnesota. The Hawks got off to a rocky start on the floor in Palmer Horse events, but their night was defined by how they came back despite the rough beginning. The continuity of the group, honestly, all the way through, even with mistakes. And that was a big component of like, don't get stuck if you make a mistake, let's move on to the next routine and do a better job. And they did a really good job of staying together and supporting each other in that aspect. The comeback consisted of strong performances by senior Mark Springett on the rings, junior Dylan Ellsworth on the parallel bars, senior Corey Patterson along with junior Austin Rogers on the pipe, and sophomore Rogelio Vesquez on the parallel bars on the rings. I've been doing a lot of routines on those events and focusing on lines, so just the little details. And they've been hitting on us on like stick landings and not taking any tents off, so that's what I was focusing on today. Another big contributor in the meet was senior Andrew Botto, who finished second in all of that. This meet definitely told us and showed everyone that they're not much better than any of our Hawkeyes, and it gave us confidence to show that we can pull up 414, 415 scores without being at our top tier performance. Despite their strong finish, the Hawkeyes ended in third place behind the top ranked Sooners in Minnesota with a final score of 414.56. Even though the Hawkeyes finish third, they'll look to build off their highest team score this season when they compete this weekend in Las Vegas. Reporting from inside Carver Hawkeye Arena, this has been Lucy Rodin, Daily Iowan TV Sports. The Hawkeyes fly to Las Vegas this weekend to compete in the Winter Cup Challenge. Now in women's gymnastics on Saturday afternoon, there was an electric crowd as the Hawks beat the University of Illinois and the University of Illinois Chicago. The 22 ranked Hawks scored a season high of 196.475 points. Molly Drenth was a runner up in the all around with a score of 39.225. Her teammate, senior Angel Metcalf, had some impressive numbers as well, finishing third with an all around score of 39.175. Metcalf also finished first in the beam with a score of 9.925. She commented on her win, saying that she, quote, always feels confident and comfortable during that event, end quote. Freshman Claire KG and junior Laney Snyder tied for second in floor. And sophomore Rose Pirokowski took first in vault along with Sullivan taking first in the even, uneven bars. Coach Larissa Libby has been very pleased with her team lately. She mentioned that, quote, are, they are becoming champions by the way they support each other, end quote. The Hawks look to continue their late season success Friday night at a quad meet in D.C. Iowa also had several other sports on the road over the weekend. At the Iowa State Classic, the track and field team set 11 personal bests in different events. The women's tennis team also had a successful weekend. They faced off against Western Michigan and Marquette and beat both of them this past Saturday. For the first time since 2008, the Hawks are 8-0. As for men's tennis, they dropped their first matchup of the season to the Oregon Ducks this weekend, 5-3. The women's golf team couldn't come up with a win either. They were at a collegiate quad match on Saturday in Arizona and ended up third out of the teams of Colorado State, BYU, and Idaho. Check us out tomorrow where we will give you a preview of baseball season because it is just around the corner. Nikki, back to you. Well, that wraps up this Monday morning show. Don't forget to check out our website, Daily on, dailyiron.com, for all the latest news between today and Friday. For Daily Iron TV, I'm Nikki Crossway. Have a great day, Iowa City, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.